it's always a pleasure having you on the program, Frontline and NTA being in production, the current affairs program that touches on all aspects, all topical issues as they arise. And we have frontline workers in different segments of society coming to tell us what we need to know about different things. Well, on this week's edition of Frontline, we are taking a look at succession crisis. Yes, as it regards law. You and I know uh, succession has different meanings, but this particular one, we're taking a look at succession crisis, how it affects families all over the world, and narrowing it down to Nigeria. It's a daily occurrence. You come across families, brothers, being at loggerheads with each other over inheritance and what their fathers left behind for them. Well, we have an expert in the studio, a legal practitioner, is going to be educating us more on what we need to do. Why is the trend on the increase in our modern times? And I, I know it's it's been a very, very a reoccurring issue, but now it is very rampant. Well, thank you for joining us. My name is Ogoch Kuka Ona. So you're welcome to the program. For thank life. you very much for having me. Yes. Okay, so it's it's you are a legal practitioner and you come across such issues. But before we dwell on that, can you quickly tell us what succession means in law? It's a simple process, ordinary to be simple, of passing estates, we call it estates, the wealth of a person while he was alive down to the offsprings, the persons whom he intends that should take over those wealth when he's no longer here. The person who is giving it out may be a male or female, that's maybe the father or the mother, but at the end of the day, the process of passing that wealth, that estate, down to his offsprings, persons whom he wished that should take over those wealth, that's it. That's succession in its simplest uh, sense. Ordinarily, it ought to be simple, like I said, but we found that the longest crisis in courts, the cases that have stayed the longest in our courts, they are cases that are family related and they are all from this small, simple arrangement called succession. Ordinarily, a parent who acquires wealth during his lifetime, we spend the entire, our entire lifetime acquiring wealth with the belief that when we are gone, this wealth we will to pass them on to our offspring to make them to give them a footing to start off in life that's the whole purpose but we found that over the time rather than being a footing for the offspring for the heirs the the beneficiaries it has turned to be something that they, that would divide them sometimes even lead to their death that, that they will fight over all through their time sometimes throughout their lifetime they are fighting their children come to continue the fight. That's how bad it has been in our climate. That's why we see covered empty all over the place. So every building, especially on landed properties. Yes, landed properties, buildings, you see different uh, trying to warn people, don't sell, don't buy. Beware of fraudsters. Unfortunately, it, does, it has not stopped anything, it has not. Last week here, just last week, a client came to my office from a very big family, big name. Ordinarily, you would think that every child from that household is well to do because they are they are a very big name. But he just told me that only one son of his father has been sitting on the entire estate for the past 27 years. Has been sitting on the entire estate and it's, he has sold virtually everything. Such a long time. Yes, and no so and that matter has been in court over over. They, they didn't have the wherewithal or the strength to go to court because when you see a son who is stronger than every other person. In might, because in our in our time, unfortunately, might is right. If you if, if you have the muscle, you are able to gather some thugs, criminals, and push your way, muscle your way through. Sometimes our people just shy away and go inside. Everybody goes inside. It's really when the persons who want to do the do, take steps, they refuse to take those steps. For example, succession ordinarily under our client here supposed to be a thing for the elders and maybe the eldest son to put heads together to do it right right but when the eldest son is not there the elders who want to do it they are afraid you are they've threatened one elder they, maybe the character has been threatened 
the children of the Kaiwe will say, I beg, Daddy, don't go there again. After all, it's not our party. Let them do whatever they want to do. See? That was the situation like the one that had happened last week. But the, we've seen several crises upon crisis or crisis just coming out from sometimes even when there is a succession plan in place mm -hmm. like a will or yes, something because succession ought to be by way of planning parents ought to plan their succession we are in many cases there's no plan in other cases there are plans but they are either too little too small i'll give you an example there was a very a prof a very big prof that died in this uh, state one would have thought that by his academic standard and his wealth he, he had put his very strong successor social plan in place unfortunately he did not he did not put any plan in place when he was very sick now very sick he was in the hospital he called unfortunately for him the problem is that what we forget is that if you don't make this plan when you are young and when you are healthy and able when you are not very sick the children who carry you around may not be the ones you want who have been there for you who you want to to give your who you want to leave certain to things, things to yes mm. at that stage it is the one who is available or who wants to do mischief that carries you around the children who were carrying him around were the eldest children who have not been available they carried him from here to the hospital far away where the wife at home and the children at home could not have access. Uh, have access by the time he said okay bring the lawyer let me prepare something down the lawyer, the will was never eventually done before he died we i was involved in the administration of that estate to, a, to a, an extent and we discovered that the wife the first wife whom he married under the english law the act what we call the marriage under the act by law that woman has a right over the estate yes. under the absurd estate law because he didn't make a will. If he had made a will or put certain arrangements in place, that absurd estate law would have been pushed aside. But since he didn't make a will, there was no social plan at the time he died. The wife who had since left him some 30 something years ago, far away with her children, came and took charge of everything. Everything, what I mean, everything, everything. The wife at home. And the little children at home who had been with him, suffering with him and keeping him alive all this while, they didn't get anything. Okay, so the problem lies with the person. Yes, the the, well, the, the, the we, we call them testator. Okay. Okay, the person who the disease now who who has not died. Most times they do not make plans. My experience is that people don't make succession plans, and where they make, they make very little plans, little, very little. They just call the lawyer. A lawyer prepared a will for me, and he's talking on the phone. And there's no planning. There's no review to it. Okay. What about the ones that plan, but there is a mischief somewhere? Yes. That's why. What's What's the ratio? There's planning sometimes that's still too little. When you want to do a proper succession plan, there should be a, a, a succession review before you get to succession succession plan. Now you should be able to check. The, the lawyer you are you are briefing to do this job or the whoever you you uh, briefing to do this job to, you are retained to do this job should ask certain questions if you want to know some know some things about your family how many wives do you have how many women give birth to children for you where are they who are they in life these things will tell us what to put down what kind of social it's not a big person okay. that it will work for so some people some 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 uh, people withhold information yes is that what you're yes. saying yes and now putting the legal practitioners or the lawyers on a very tight corner it's not really the lawyer you put your entire estate in the tight corner because at the end of the day when you are gone when that person is gone it is the estate that, that finds itself in the problem because the one who ought to get something and is not getting it feels cheated i would never accept any will or whatever i may put on the ground then the crisis starts. They begin to go to court. And once it starts, it doesn't end because you will not want the other woman to win. Especially when there are two women. <laughs> woman A will not want two the other woman. You know how it is. <laughs> they don't body wants the other person to win. They will sell off everything they have. That those properties that you have left for them to be useful in life. They sell those things off to pay lawyers, pay courts, bribe uh, police, do whatever they can do just to get a headway. Just to say, I want this case. 
there's a property matter we are doing now. That property matter we started. I I came into it. I met two lawyers fighting that matter. One of them was very old when he brought me in. He brought me and say he was getting too old. He may not be able to argue certain things. I should join him. He has since passed on. The lawyer on the other side has passed on. The two lawyers that said the matter they passed on. Myself and another younger lawyer were the ones doing the matter at the moment. And the way it is, we are still very much at the peripheral stage. Nobody knows how long it will go. All this is money that is wasted. As far as I'm concerned, we are, I'm sure we've spent up to half of the estate already fighting at the High Court. We've not got it to recover by faith. This and that may not have been the intent of the testator. Definitely not his intent. If he had put things in place properly, do a proper review with a lawyer who knows how these things are done to do a review for you. Like I said before, it's not every person a will will work for. And will is not the only social plan that is allowed in law. There are other ones like what we call a uh, executor de santo, sorry, um, we, uh, gift intervivors. While the person is, uh, is alive, he makes a gift. Mm -hmm. You can call your family together. Uh, uh, my family, look at, look at, look at. You make this gift while they are alive. You are still in control, but you have gifted that person. But again, that may not, also not work in every situation because if you do it in certain places, it will lead to a crisis while you are still alive. So they have, you look at your peculiar situation, which one works for you, which one fits you. That's why a lawyer does the review, a, an expert does the review. He looks at what kind of estate are we looking at. Of course, the larger the estate, the more the likelihood of crisis. That's not to say there are no crises in poor homes. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen poor homes where we have crises. There's one of my clients there, she was the eldest daughter. They were just uh, four daughters. The mom left a small house for them, some rooms in the house. They shared amongst themselves. One, one room. Yeah, yeah, yeah one, one room and some extra ones to uh, maintain themselves. At the end of the day, one of them got married. And the moment that one got married, they were still living in the house. Crisis started. Oppression and before you knew what they were almost dragging themselves to a police station. The same mother, the same mother, the same father. So we have seen crisis in all these. These are things that could have been avoided. And again, in this our client, we are very good at. I want to leave this house to all of them jointly. It's very wrong. Joint property works in the village. When we are all in the village, it used to work. Now we are not city people. City people don't think that way. In, city, in the city, it is my own, not our own. Whereas in the village, our own is the uh, uh, key word. So that in the city when, where you have my own, you don't build a big estate and say it is our own. We have to live there together. People don't live together in the city. Families don't live together there. They actually fight more when they are together. So uh, advancements in technology, or what are you hinging this on now? Uh, why, 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 why does the uh, succession plan fail? It fails because there was no review. If you review well, see, there's every there's a situation that will fit every every crisis. Now you see, if you have like the situation I talked about, the twenty-seven years of uh, crisis, mm -hmm. that case would have been best settled with the father while he was alive, giving out these properties. Because you know you have one son who is very bad, who is very troublesome, who is stronger than every person, who is most likely going to muscle his way. And he did muscle his way and got things uh, done. If you have such a situation, because we look at, those are the things you look at in a review. If I'm doing a review for a client is before me and he's telling me he has this estate, that estate, I will ask you, how many children do you have? How many? mothers give birth to these children where are they at the moment who are they are they likely to be troublesome who are, who are likely to be troublesome you give me their details there i do my own review and come up with a plan that will work okay so in essence are you saying some uh, legal practitioners are feeling in this direction they, they don't dig deep yeah, i wouldn't say it is the legal practitioner it is how you are briefed now you see uh, most of the times when clients call me to prepare uh, way for them they just call on phone most times. Then the few that have the presence of mind, they won't come to your office. Once they come, they want it done immediately. Even when you tell them it can't be done immediately, because the way the wills act is uh, the wills law is drawn, it's drawn in such a way that 
we are to get certain witnesses to come and, and endorse does. that will. And those witnesses are usually not available. That's where the delay comes in most times. I did a will for one of my clients. He had called me to his house, come and prepare my will. I liked the way he arranged everything and we went, did everything. Where we had problem was getting those witnesses. When I said, go and bring two witnesses, problem started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we started to really die, come today, come tomorrow. Oh, I will call you. I will call until he passed on without that. That will was never endorsed. Now, that will would have saved a lot of crises that it had come up. But because of that lack of endorsement, it wasn't done. And because there was no presence of mind from his own part, but if he had the presence of mind, he would have completed it. So it's not really the lawyer, it is the way we are briefed. Just like a, a person buying land, you go to a lawyer and say, prepare this of transfer for me. The lawyer will prepare this of transfer and charge With you. With the information you have provided. Of course, you know that that will be cheaper. That's why you came like that. The appropriate thing would have been, lawyer, I want to buy land in so, so, so place. Go and do investigations get the appropriate documentations and prepare them. Oh, is, it, is it because uh, some some of you charge very high, you know, there's and no, there's the no chicken fee, out? There's no fee that is actually too high because the consequence of it's not doing it right is what we are facing today. You go to GRA, there are some very big houses, very big houses, money well spent. They are just lying there, lying fallow. Sometimes you begin to fall because there is a crisis in court, there is a dispute in court, and there is an order that says everybody stay away from the property. There, there are filling stations that I don't want to mention them that have closed up today just because there is a dispute in court. As between the children themselves, interse, it's not like there is a dispute from an outsider. Then we also have cases where it may not be the children themselves, it may be an extended family member, an uncle. Take for example, the one that is very common in Benin here. The person is abroad, southside Nigeria. He's building houses, doing investment in Nigeria, in Benin here. Most likely the children are overseas with him. He has not said what he wants with those estates he's, that estate is amassing here, he's building here. There must be a plan for it. Assuming he passed on today, the uncles here, the brothers here, believe that this one this one is our own ah this is what we are able to get from our brother the children comes from that side i want these things they will do everything and anything to ensure that those children if whatever to take sometimes we will take the children dying mm. so those are the things people don't put in place always do a review go to a lawyer to do a review for you and when after the review ensure that the plan that the lawyer draws up is followed up Seriously, not just uh, prepare it. I will we'll come later. We'll talk about it later. That's, I've seen so many that will come when you tell them something. They say, "Okay, let me go and think about it. I'll come back." No, follow it up to the end. Then you can go home and sleep and relax. Okay, so sourcing uh, When should be the best time to have a succession plan? Mm, the best. The best time is whenever anything good is acquired, anything new is acquired. You you get married. You should make a social plan. You give birth to a child, make a social plan. Adjust you should or amend. Update. This should yes, be updated. updated. Mm. Then, when you give birth to a second child, the same thing, amend, update. If you buy a new car, or you buy a new property, amend, update. Whatever anything good, anything new is acquired, you should always update your social plan. At least once in a while, see your, your... Because the plan, if it's properly drawn up, it's supposed to be something that you are supposed to see your, so you store your, the lawyer involved every once in a while over, over the, the, the plan. It shouldn't be a thing that you just draw it up and go home and sleep. And again, there are some, I, I told you there are several kinds of social plan. There are cases where the social plan will involve you handing over the properties to the lawyer. If you are to be in sure, charge? Yes. If you are not sure of what will happen. What if something happens to the lawyer? That's why when you are handing it over to the lawyer, there should be there will be documentation of course. You don't just and um, witnesses yes, too. Yes, of course. Usually, if I were retained to do that, I would ask the client, let's deposit these properties, the actual documents, in the bank. Let because the bank is an organization, not an individual. You can't kill the bank. You can't go and go and kidnap the bank mm. the way you would do a lawyer or an individual. So the properties or the documents. Covering those properties are in the bank. 
even if the son, whoever it is, comes to me and say, my father's properties, give that to me now. I can't give them to you. They are not my custody. They are in the bank. So the bank, the lawyer, the lawyer has the instruction. The bank has the custody. Then the estate is there. It becomes very difficult, almost impossible for the plan not to work. Okay, so do we have almost some impossible. do we have some lawyers who, you know, shift grounds? Maybe you want to favor one party or the other because we've seen such cases. Are lawyers to be trusted appropriately in no, this? This is, this is Nigeria. That's your question. <laughs> it's just like asking me. You give a rat. Uh, uh, no, if, if Nigeria has become a uh, heaven overnight, the truth is this in Nigeria, you have good policemen, you have bad policemen, you have good lawyers, you have bad lawyers, you have good judges, you have bad everything, every profession will have bad ex. So don't there's no way you can say all the lawyers in Nigeria they are good mm. or all of them they are bad. Mm. No. Try to know your lawyer. Try to test him with integrity. Is he the kind of person that would sell out when the chips are down? Those are things you should know your lawyer before you give the person. It's not just any lawyer you see you give. You know you must have had dealings with this lawyer, or from the way the lawyer has handled what you, the little you gave to him, how he handled it. You know, say, oh, this man can be trusted to handle the many. You know, handle what the many. To him. Do you have uh, uh, services from uh, so the average people or very poor people? Is it only? Very wealthy people that every person, every every person. person. you have cases you are handling that are from yes, yes, the local. Of course, of course, every person is uh, entitled to legal services, and the the weight of what you are bringing to my office to, for me to do for you will determine how I will charge you. And I also look at your personality too. If you can't fund the, the case, whatever you are bringing to me, take for example this succession plan. You bring the succession plan to me. You only have one house. I look at it. Okay, the house is. How much? Maybe it's five million naira on the average uh, estimate. I'll look at how I can charge you in a way that it won't help. It won't be too much on you. I think that it won't cause crisis when you leave. The governor say, let me take uh, the peanuts for you and just do what they do a shabby job for you. When you leave, the plan will fail. So there, okay, yesterday a colleague called me. The, the father, the father came to meet her prepare the process to eject some children from his house. So his children from his house that they want to kill him. Now, this man is still alive. He's having this crisis with his children. You can be rest assured that when he's gone, there will be crisis over that part. You don't need to be told. So these are the things we review. These are the things we look at in the review. You see, is this, are these children reliable? Are they the type that will give crap trouble? Are there family members that will be problem? Are there other issues that will be problem? Those are the things we look at in the review. We we'll say, okay, this system will work for you. It's not everybody that we will work for. Like I said, that I've seen wheels that failed, and again, we've also seen wheels that were not properly drafted. There's a wheel that gave a house to a son. That house that was given to that son was bought in the company in the name of a company, the father's company. And that father's company was not given out, was not shared, was not shared in any under any arrangement. That is, that in itself is crisis because you have, have, have not shared that company. You have left the company to be dealt with in line with in the, uh, the positions of karma. And if you follow the position of karma, that son you are giving that house to will not get the company. And if he doesn't get the company, he can't get the house. So there are sometimes when we are drafted, they are drafted. There are some errors so that you don't rush these things, you take time. That's why you should do it at the best time when you have the ability, you are strong, you, you have time to review it. Not something you just rush and give you midnight, I want it done tomorrow. You are not going to get something good at that, uh, with that approach of hey, do it now, I want to sign it now, you won't get anything done. I had a case where one man called me, a son, just, I just insulted him, maybe he fought with his wife or so, I don't remember that. Called me immediately and say he wants a way to do to disinherit his elder son. <laughs> I said, immediately. Uh, so you see some of these things. It's not something you rush and in the heat of the moment you prepare yourself and come. Okay, so l l lastly now, in essence, you're saying anybody can have a succession plan. Yes, everybody. Whether you're rich yes. or poor or polygamous family, yeah. 
Okay. All right. So, what's your advice now? Lastly, and straightforward. What's what's what can be done? Put put putting it mildly now. What can be done to avert all this? Because it it hinders progress. Yes. You see, now progress or. We, but we are the we are the parents of that tomorrow we are talking about. We are the ones that will leave this estate to the next generation. Now, as working adults, and let me use that word, as working adults, we should always have it in mind that we will not be here forever. That is not to say you are going to die tomorrow. Because the thing is this, we are very superstitious people. We are that we are very superstitious people. We have this belief that Mm, if I talk about death, I will die tomorrow. It's not true. If I prepare for death, I will die tomorrow. It's not true. I have this uh, pastor friend of mine. He talks about death with his name every now and then. When you ask him, ah, why the way? He say, no, does not mean anything? I won't die. So that's how we should see life from that perspective. That we have to plan. So that's where we have this problem. We don't plan. Will is not the only method that works. If we look at, if a good lawyer looks at your situation, you will know which one will work. Most of the parties you see in the court premises, they will tell you this property has been here 20 years, 30 years. They belong to family. Wasting away. Mm. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for finding time to join us on this week's edition of Frontline. I must say I have gathered one or two things, and I do hope you have also gathered one or two things that will advance your course in succession planning, not only in law, but in everything you do. Bye for now, and stay safe.